What's going on, everybody? Clint here from the Die Hard MMA podcast. Just wrapped up the post weigh-in video. Make sure you go on over to Odds HQ and check that out. I've got a couple of add-on bets here for UFC Fight Island 4 that I really go into on that one. Uh, this is just our usual quick shout out. Thank you very much video. I got to tell you, normally speaking, I like to shout everybody out by name when I get tips, when I get donations. They mean the absolute world to me here on the show and especially coming off of a week like last week where we absolutely crushed the card. All the picks, like nine and one, I think I went on picks and then having so many underdogs. I know we just absolutely destroyed our bookies. I know people out there made tons on last week's card. These are the ones that make all the difference in the world to me and thank you all so much for the tips and donations that have been coming in for that i am a one-man show here and yes I'm, I'm doing the video for odds so i know i don't do like the shout outs live on the video and stuff like that anymore i can't because of my relationship with odds so i want to make sure i get those out here for you all because the support makes all the difference in the world for me so thank you all from the bottom of my heart without you guys there really wouldn't be a show and the tips and donations make a huge difference for me i'm never going to charge you for in information i'm never going to charge you for a damn thing so when those come rolling in like i said they're never expected um but I, I appreciate them so much you guys have no idea so thank you very very much now for ufc fight island 4 there's a couple of spots that I am looking at as far as prop bets and submissions and things like that. You know, we like to sprinkle on those spots a little bit here and there. And I haven't really gone into it in most of my other videos because uh, I'm having to wait until the very last second to get some of these in. One thing I want to address is uh, Holly Holm. I ended up betting her straight. Some people have asked me about Holly Holm by decision. And yeah, this fight more than likely is going to decision. But I think Irene Aldana had a bit of a rough weight cut. And if that's the case, when she hits round four, round five, she may not be the same fighter and Holly is perfectly capable of finishing. We've seen it before at a high level in the UFC. So if Irene Aldana does get tired, I think it's better to play Holly Holm straight rather than chasing, you know, 25 cents worth of a price tag and locking yourself into a decision only spot. So just wanted to give you all the heads up on that. I'm looking very, very closely at taking my boy Charles Air Jordan inside the distance. I know it's a little bit chalky at this point, I wasn't able to lock that bet in early. Um, you can get them by knockout at right around even money at this point. That wouldn't be half bad. And I think inside the distance is like minus 150. Um, I think submission is totally live. Obviously, he's more likely to land the knockout than the other one. But again, are we arguing over 30 or 40 cents worth of juice? Might as well include it there to make sure you get the other outcome. You would hate for him to land a rear naked choke on a guy when... Uh, you know, after he drops him with a big punch and you're sitting there with the knockout prop or something like that. The wild ones that I'm looking at, now these are not official. Obviously, if they become official, I will tweet them. But I'm looking at trying a little poke here on Court McGee in round three. I'm not planning on betting Carlos Condit and Court McGee um, from a, a side standpoint just because it's so sketchy with both these guys being old with both these guys being over the hill court mcgee is not much of a finner, finisher he's never been much of a finisher but what he does is not stop and Con carlos condit he's an older fighter now if you remember in court mcgee's last fight against the guy sean brady we were all sweating balls when we had sean brady in that fight Court McGee was coming on strong late in that fight. And if he can go to the grappling, if he can wear down Carlos Condit, I think Carlos Condit is live to get picked off and happening late would be the way to do it when Court McGee has more gas in the tank than Condit does. And you can get that at like 20 to one right now. That might be a sprinkle for me just because I think that line is wildly out of whack and Carlos Condit is the ripe age for a fighter that's going to give up that kind of a finish when he just doesn't have the gas or the will to continue. Um, Nasrundin Imayov, this is a guy that I jumped on as a dog after the post weigh-in show. If you haven't checked that out, that's where that official pick came from. And honestly, I'm very, very tempted to sprinkle a little bit on Imayov inside the distance. Now, you can get him by knockout at plus 360. His opponent has been knocked out twice already, and he's a guy that likes to stand and bang and is willing to trade. So maybe not a bad look there, but the submission prop at plus 650, that one's not a bad option in my opinion either because this could be a club and sub type of situation. Imayov knows what he's doing on the mat. He's got a couple of submission wins. I could absolutely see him getting down there and pulling that off. The other one that I'm looking at is 
Casey Kenny. I know we've already got him in the parlay, so that's something that we're not necessarily looking for. But Casey Kenny by submission is three to one. Now, Haile Alatang is a guy that hasn't been submission submitted, but I think he had a rough weight cut again. And this is a guy that likes to grapple. Casey Kenny is not really much of a knockout threat, but what he can do is overwhelm Alatang and when this thing hits the mat, and Casey Kenny is going hard, going strong in round two and round three, and Alatang is running out of gas, he's running out of energy, and he ends up on bottom grappling rather than being on top. I don't know how he's gonna respond to that. Casey Kenny could totally lock up a sub here. And if you can get three to one on that, that might be worth a sprinkle as well. I think that about does it for me. Jermaine Durandamy by knockout is another one that maybe I'm taking a look at because I feel like at this point she's going to stuff the takedowns. That under two and a half is tempting. And honestly, Jermaine Durandamy in round three is another one that I'm very, very tempted on. That one's 14 to one. And uh, I know she has been an absolute monster in the UFC. If Pena can't get the takedown, she's going to be forced to stand, and they're just miles apart. Pena is very, very durable, hard to finish herself, and because of that, I feel like Jermaine Durandamy, even with the pop she's got on her punches, she might not be able to get it done in the first round or the second round. But 14-1 to 1 in round three, when both women are tired, when Jermaine knows how to dig deep, when she's still got that pop on her punches, and maybe Pena has failed to get those takedowns, that might be the time where she's ripe for a knockout. So keep an eye out on my Twitter, at DieHardMMAPod. Those are my thoughts behind those bets. Those are the reads. I'm not sure I'm going to make those, but I feel like those are a couple little uh, sprinkles for you all if you're looking for a little extra degenerate action since we've played this card so close to the vest. Once again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you, diehards. I have the best fan base in the business. So without you guys, I wouldn't be doing what I do. Thank you very much. Good luck on everything. And uh, let's keep this hype train rolling, baby. Let's cash another couple of tickets here come Saturday. Let's roll, everybody.